Right, this uh, video clip is just demonstrating the OS X and iOS integration with Cloud, uh, with Core Data and, and Apple's iCloud. So I've got on the left, I've got um, the OS X version of the application open, and in the right hand side, I've got the iOS version running in the simulator. So I've just made some updates to the text. You can see the difference um, between the two texts. The one I've uh, put in some nice formatted code and the other one's just got plain text. And I've just done a save on the OS X version of the app and, and then I've just had to go into the simulator to trigger an, an iCloud sync. And you can see the iOS app has just imported the transaction logs via iCloud and updated the UI to display the the new information. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and make a change on the iOS version of the app and we can see how that then gets replicated back to the OS X app. So I'm just going in and changing the responsible person and click done to trigger a save um, and we should see it takes a it takes a few seconds to for the actual logs to be synced via our cloud and for the UI uh, on the Mac app to be updated so you can see in the background OS X transaction logs um, and that's actually the simulator but it's indicating that the iCloud files have changed um, and you can see the the update um, that's just gone through on the on the OS X desktop app. Okay, so we've just gone in there and changed the status to behind schedule. Um, and you can you'll see then. Okay, now I'm putting it back to completed, but uh, if you look at the OS X app you will see that the little icon in the outline view changes and in response to the to the updates on the iOS app bearing in mind that you know the use case for these apps is not that the user sits and works on two different apps or two different devices simultaneously you know there's limits to how much you can do without running into data uh, consistency problems. Alright, so we're still waiting for the update where I reset the status to completed uh, to appear back in the desktop app and there you go, it's just come through now. Alright, um, what we'll show now is we'll actually add a new record on the iOS app I think I'll just create a new folder version 1.39. There we go. I'm going to create a new document and I'll open the document and edit some of the details. Now I go down and just put in some text. Um, you notice that we've got some neat, rich text formatting buttons that we've included. Again, if you want to know more about how to do some of this, then just post a message and I can put up some of the uh, sample code for our smart UI text view. Right, we've created that new record and as you can see in the background it's already replicated the initial creation of that object. It hasn't yet replicated the updated file name and the contents. Now 
Anyway, in the meantime, I'll... Okay, there you can see the desktop app's just been updated to reflect the new um, file name. Now I'll just show you how we do some deep searches. So I'm going to just search for that text that I put in, you know, some bullet uh, on the iOS app, and you can see that it highlights the folder, and you can just navigate your way through to find the object that where there's a, a match. Because it's a hierarchical structure, we can't really just create a filtered list. Okay, let's go and have a look on the desktop to see if we've got all the formatted text. And there we go, that's the formatted text coming through um, on the desktop app. Okay, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how on the desktop where I'm going to create a local copy of this document by just going to File, Save As. And under the covers, we're still using Persistent Store Coordinator's Migrate Persistent Store API to do this. And when we do this, by default, File Save As creates a local-only copy, so the file is not synchronized uh, or available in, in iCloud. All right, so I've just done File Save As, and we've got a copy of the new document. All right, well, quickly just... Uh, show you around the app. Um, I use it for tracking the actual software development. And you can create folders and you can put all kinds of whatever you want in it. Uh, here's the article posted on the web about UI managed document and iCloud integration. I'm also using it to document sample code so I can remember what um, I've done. Right, to share in iCloud, we just go to the share in iCloud menu, but before we go there, just going to quickly open up some of the directories on the local disk. Um, those are the files we open, and when we share them in iCloud, Cordato creates this directory, and it creates a whole bunch of subdirectories for the document, which is where it keeps the actual store and transaction logs and replicates them to cloud. Okay, so we'll go ahead and um, share the document in iCloud. Bring up the Finder windows, and oh, you can see how quick it is. It's already in, in iCloud. It's already created the new document. Um, it wouldn't have populated any transaction logs yet, so I'll need to just save the document. And then I need to just force the um, simulator to synchronize with with iCloud and you should see yeah there you go there's the simulators ubiquity container uh, immediate, almost immediately synchronizes and we're getting the um, and the app then immediately picks that up and builds the local copy of the iCloud store yeah this document's quite large it's about 11 meg um, so it takes a bit of time to actually download for some reason the, the simulator seems to be quite a lot slower so I'll just open up some of those folders to so you can actually see some of the directory structures so on the local device um, yeah it's pretty much what we expect to see on the local devices ubiquity container once again it's got a document and a whole bunch of subfolders and I think you'll see that that stage it's really just uh, it hasn't synchronized any of the transaction logs and I don't think it, it it won't do that until we've actually opened the document and that forces it to download the, so yeah so there in the cloud you can see there's a transaction log um, which doesn't appear in the local devices ubiquity container. So until we actually open the document on the device, it won't start downloading that um, particular file. So 
So we just give it a little bit more time. You can see I forced the synchronization again and it's still nothing. So I'll now open the document on the actual device. And I think you see as soon as I do that, it automatic core data automatically then picks up there's a transaction log, downloads it to the device and I think it's quite a large file so it takes a little bit of time to download. So any second now it should update the UI. There we go. So it's downloaded those that initial transaction log and it's updated the user interface. So just to prove that we'll just go and open the same document that we opened earlier, the UI manage document and iCloud integration. And there you can see the same formatting on your iPhone. So if you come up with any great thoughts while you're out and about, you can just uh, capture them and they'll appear back on your desktop when you're done.